Hello, bonjour, and welcome to another edition of JSL TV. I am your host, my name is Joel, and in this video, we are going to be discussing France as they take on Finland in their final World Cup qualifying match on Tuesday in Helsinki. Here are the five things that you need to know heading into that fixture. Point number one, unblemished. The French national team have been near perfect. Now, not necessarily in their play. They have had some very iffy performances, some very iffy results. However, what they have not done is lost a game. And we can't say that about French national teams in the past for quite some time. As a matter of fact, the last time that the French national team went through an entire qualifying phase without losing a game for the World Cup, that was way back in their 2006 World Cup qualifying campaign when a certain Zinedine Zidane joined the fold, essentially saving Raymond Domenech's hide, saving his skin, allowing him to stay in the job for the French national team a lot longer, probably, in my opinion, than he really deserved. Zinedine Zidane, of course, went on to uh, lead France all the way to the World Cup final that year and then became a bit of an infamy, a source of infamy, so to speak, uh, the world over. Over, but after that uh, World Cup performance, a lot of people, even people who knew nothing about soccer, knew the name Zinedine Zidane, perhaps for the wrong reasons, but in any event, the last time the French national team was able to go through an entire qualifying phase without losing was 2006. If the French avoid defeat on Tuesday, then they will be unblemished throughout the entire qualifying phase. Point number two. Can lightning strike twice? It was just over a year ago. It was on Remembrance Day 2020 when Finland scored their only ever victory against the French national team. It was a 2-0 victory in a friendly at the Stade de France. Finland will remember that day very fondly. The French, not so much. Can Finland get it done again? Finland will need a result most likely to ensure their place in a playoff. They are only two points ahead of the Ukraine heading into the final day of qualifying. Ukraine face Bosnia and Herzegovina on the final day. That will not be an easy match for them. Of course, Ukraine still has a shot to potentially make it into this World Cup. Finland... They might be able to still get in even if they don't end up winning, even if they come away empty-handed from their fixture with France. They might still have a chance. They only have a uh, one uh, plus one goal difference, which is only one better than uh, the third place team Ukraine. That's something to consider. A win for sure guarantees they finish second place and make it into a playoff. Can they do it again just over a year from that triumph, we will have to wait and see. Point number three, and this is sort of uh, tag teaming on what we just talked about of that famous Finland victory over the French just over a year ago. Well, as a matter of fact, some people might view that as a bit of an asterisk for the Finnish team. Yeah, they got a victory against the world champions and there were some players from France's 2018 team who were featuring in that particular game, but there was a lot of key players who were not in the starting lineup for the French national team on that day, and we could see the same thing again on Tuesday. As a matter of fact, there was no Olivier Giroud. He started on the bench on that particular day when they lost just over a year ago. Karim Benzema was not even in the French national team. He was still in exile. Kylian Mbappe did not play the entire match on that particular day. Antoine Griezmann started on the bench on that day. And Hugo Lloris wasn't even starting in goal, the captain for the French team. It was Steve Mandanda who started. Now, we should expect to see wholesale changes. If history tells us anything about the French national team, is that when they have something assured, when they have something clinched for the following round, whether it's in the middle of a Euro campaign, in the middle of a World Cup campaign, a qualifying campaign, whatever it may be, they usually go with wholesale changes, and Didier Deschamps is no exception to that rule. I would be very surprised to see Griezmann play an entire game. I'd be very surprised to see Benzema and Mbappe feature throughout the entire 90 minutes as well. Even Hugo Lloris, I'd be very surprised to see. And Golo Conte, I can't expect to see him in the lineup for this one, especially given his injury issues in the past and just how valuable he is not only to the French national team, but also to Chelsea as well in their quest to try to claim the premiership this year. I'd be very surprised if Didier Deschamps takes a risk and puts somebody like N'Golo Conte on there. So that means 
that could leave the door open for some other players, the likes of Chuameni, the likes of uh, Wissam Ben Yedder, some uh, local French talent perhaps might be able to get a few more starts. What does that mean in goal? Alphonse Areola has had a good campaign in England for West Ham United. Are they going to be able to put him back in the lineup or are they going to go with Hugo Lloris again? A lot of questions for the French national team heading into this game. Teo Hernandez, maybe we'll see Benjamin Pavard come back into the lineup. A lot of things to think about, but I would be very surprised if we saw a similar lineup from the one we saw over the weekend against Kazakhstan and a lot of the uh, big dynamic players for the French team who have contributed on a game-by-game -game basis. I'd be very surprised to see a lot of them on uh, the field to start their match on Tuesday. That leads to point number four, which is the dynamic duo. I just mentioned we are unlikely to see these two, but if we do see them, there is something to think about because the dynamic duo that I'm talking about is Kylian Mbappe and Karim Benzema. They have been splendid together ever since Benzema came out of exile and was reselected for the French national team just before the Euros. They have been splendid of late and in very fine form, leaving the question as to when Kylian Mbappe will join Real Madrid and play with Karim Benzema if that is going to happen at some point in the future. It seems imminent that that's going to happen, but in the meantime, the French are the ones who are benefiting the most from these two. Mbappe... He did score four goals last time, but he has also been unbelievably unselfish over the past few games. He has set up a goal by Karim Benzema in the final of the uh, Nations League, in the semifinal against Belgium. He also set up a goal from Karim Benzema there, and he set up Karim Benzema for a tap-in in their 8-0 victory over Kazakhstan. We talked last time about uh, tactical imbalance. Is sitting those guys out for a game or two, even though you have everything clinched, is that going to create a bit of a tactical imbalance for the French team? Do you need those guys in there? Or are they going to be too rusty for future games that really matter? That's something to think about as well, heading into uh, Tuesday's final World Cup qualifier. And point number five, it's the GOAT versus the Little Prince. When I'm talking about the GOAT, I am talking about Norwich City striker Timo Puku, who has been splendid for Finland. He's, his nickname is the GOAT, and he has been the GOAT for Finland so far in this qualification campaign. He leads all scorers with six goals for Finland as he has them poised to potentially make it to a playoff and hopefully for their sake make it to a World Cup for the first time in their history. On the opposite side, we have Antoine Griezmann who also has six goals for the French national team. I talked about before how he's seen a bit of a limited role. He's not as much in the spotlight anymore just because of how flashy and how great Mbappe and Benzema have looked together and Paul Pogba as well who I've not mentioned and Pogba's not going to be in the lineup by the way, because of his injury woes. He's going to be gone for the next little while. But in any event, Antoine Griezmann, even in a limited role, has still been contributing consistently to the French national team. He leads all French players with six goals in this World Cup qualifying campaign. He is only two caps away from catching his manager, Didier Deschamps, who has 103 caps. Griezmann has 101 Will Deschamps give him a look, put him on as a substitute? Will he play to start the game at all? Does he want all of his star players, including Antoine Griezmann, on the bench throughout this game and not risk an injury whatsoever? We will have to wait and see. Now, uh, Griezmann not only is closing in on his manager's um, all-time caps record of 103, but... He's also getting closer and closer to the all-time goal-scoring mark. He is at 42 goals. He surpassed Michel Platini last time in their game against Kazakhstan with his goal from the penalty spot. He uh, is only four goals away from catching Olivier Giroud, who is second. And Thierry Henry, he is nine goals away from catching Thierry Henry for most all-time. Griezmann, given his goal-scoring form of late for the French national team and how well he's performed, is that going to be enough for Deschamps to want to put him in the lineup and, again, maybe to not force too much of a tactical imbalance? A lot of things to think about as we head into the final match day of World Cup qualifying for the French team. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts. 
Is uh, the French team in a good position right now? Should they be resting some of their players heading into this final World Cup qualifier? Is that going to mess with the tactical imbalance of this team? Who should be some of the players in the starting 11? Who should come on uh, as a substitute for this upcoming game? Give me a thumbs up if you like this video as mentioned. Like and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more quality French content in the future.